Honorable Ministers, Minister of Transport, Amos Kamunya, Honorable Minister for Justice, Eugene Wamala, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Italy. I have to tell you that I was, um, <laughs> earlier, uh, when, um, when Honorable Wamala was speaking, and he said that he would rather like to be referred to as Excellency this time next year. Um, a member of my table says, good, we can make him the ambassador to Italy. <laughs> uh, so, I noticed on the, um, I noticed on the, the program that it says, that I will make a few remarks. I have to tell you that when my friend Linus Gatai called me and asked me to do this, he asked me to do a speech, not a few remarks. So I fear, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have a speech, not a few remarks. <laughs> um, but before. <laughs> so let me get to my speech. It really is an honor to be here today. And I knew that when I was invited to be here, the bad news was that uh, Safaricom is clearly not going to win anything tonight, um, which was a disappointment, but nonetheless. But tonight we really are here to celebrate excellence and really to applaud the outstanding efforts and achievements that you as a business community have made in growing your companies, in growing your industries, and indeed in growing Kenya's economy. Now, since 2010, the Kenya Institute of Management has developed the Organizational Performance Index, which has been used to determine the companies that should be honored at COYA. Now, the, this performance index really places emphasis on the relationship between instilling smart business processes and generating strong business results. And these tools provide a much needed introspective view into our companies and our processes. And at the heart of the OPI are seven pillars. And these pillars are the yardstick of measurement for the awards that we celebrate here tonight, all of which are important in increasing our competitiveness, not just nationally, but also globally. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight I want to talk to you not about the OPI, but I want to talk to you about our organizations as important entities in economies that are becoming increasingly borderless. Now, we're now operating in a global environment, and it's important for us to compete at that level. The advent of these borderless economies has implications not only on what we produce, but also on what happens behind the closed doors of our businesses. The yardsticks upon which our deliverables are being measured have expanded to include a global outlook. And simply put, the eyes of the world are watching our every business practice. And if we were to compete on this global level, it is essential that we align our operations and strategies with universally accepted practices. It is the only way that we will improve our competitive position. And it is for this reason that tonight I'm going to talk to you about the principles of the United Nations Global Compact, because the importance of aligning our businesses to these global standards simply cannot be overemphasized. I want to talk to you about human rights, I want to talk to you about labor rights, about environmental issues, and about corruptions. Now, human rights might not be an obvious topic for a business dinner like this one, because it's a subject that we would rather leave to the non-governmental organizations. So why am I talking to you about human rights in relation to business? Why does it matter? Well, it matters a great deal because the business community carries as much responsibility as any other individual or organization in protecting human rights. You see, the nature and scope of business has changed. Human rights are increasingly becoming an organizational issue. This means that we must engage 
proactively in policies that protect human rights. It means that we must look beyond our products and practices, but also use our leverage to influence external policies as they relate to the protection of human rights. Now, advancing technology also means that we're now more visible as a business community to the world. The information that's available to our customers goes beyond our products. It extends to the conditions under which those goods and services are made. So the answer would be yes, human right matters in businesses in more ways than one. They're important to our customers, to our employees, and to our stakeholders. A second issue is the freedom of association. Now this is a little more controversial. It's important that as businesses, we uphold the freedom of association and effective recognition of collective bargaining. Now, squabbles between management and staff will take you nowhere. It drains your energy and it wastes time. It's also important that unions or staff councils and management share the same vision because both actually want a workforce that is happy, that is content, and consequently committed to the work that they do. This, of course, proves to be quite a tough balancing act, but you actually just have to do it. And as we speak of these freedoms, let us not forget the rights of our children. Those who are forced into labor by circumstances and the businesses that perpetrate this violence. Now, is a customer in Germany or in, uh, in Italy bothered about a ball that is being sewn in China by a child who should be in school? Well, maybe yes or maybe no. But either way, our customers and our shareholders expect high standards from us, and this can never, ever be compromised. Now, there are many gray areas on this issue of child labor, but as businesses, we need to stand up for the rights of the child. Our child labor deprives children of their childhood and their dignity. They're deprived of an education, and they may be separated from their families. Children who do not complete their primary education are likely to remain illiterate and never acquire the skills needed to get a job and to contribute to the development of a modern economy. Now, consequently, child labor results in underskilled, unqualified workers and jeopardizes the future improvement of skills in the workforce. Now, earlier this month, UNICEF launched the children's rights and business principles here in Kenya. The 10 principles serve as an inspiration and a guidepost in, their interaction, in our interaction with children in the workplace, in the marketplace, and in the environment. Now, some of you might argue that it's not clean cut, nor is it black and white. And I actually, I have to say that I agree with you. There are plenty of very gray areas. You know, I spent four years living and working in South Africa. And in South Africa, there are 18 million children. 122,000 of those children are the heads of their households. So then what happens in this situation? Do you deny a child work given the responsibility that they play in the family that they had? Do you let them go hungry? As a company, what should you do? So yes, it's not black and white. But whichever way you choose to look at it, the decision will impact your organization in the end. And discrimination is another issue that we must also strive to eliminate in our workforces. Our business environment needs to be free and fair because opportunities are opportunities for everybody. Now, for example, we need to ensure that our work environments are conducive to the disabled, who are a very marginalized group of people. Does your office building enable the disabled? Does your recruitment policy and your promotion policy and practice treat everyone equally, irrespective of race, political leaning, age, or ethnic origin? And we can't talk about discrimination without mentioning gender diversity in the workplace. Now, in looking at this, we have to go beyond the very simplistic uh, approach of affirmative action. We have to look at our workforce in relation to our customers. And for example, if it's Safaricom, more than 50% of our customers are women. If 
less than 50% a part of that decision-making process, we will make the wrong decisions. Discriminatory practice results in missed opportunities for the development of skills and infrastructure to strengthen competitiveness in the national and the global economy. And finally, discrimination isolates an employer from the wider community and will damage your reputation, your profits, your profits and your stock value. As businesses, we cannot in, in, ignore the environment. It's our duty to undertake initiatives that promote greater environmental responsibility. As we try to gain competitive advantage, we have to consider the impact of our actions on the environment. Now, lobbying for the use of recycled paper instead of plastic is not enough. Instead of concentrating on the bare necessities and giving the occasional CSR nod, we need to have a proactive approach to the betterment of our environment. Now, a few weeks ago, Safaricom, in partnership with a small company called Mcopa Kenya, launched a thing called Mcopa Solar. Now, this is a product which provides affordable solar-powered household lighting to rural Kenyans on a pay-as-you-go basis. And what we did was to bring together some simple things. We brought together uh, a SIM card, a um, uh, a solar panel, M-Pesa, and, um, and, uh, uh, and some other existing technologies. The result turned out to be a reduction in the adverse effect of kerosene. Now, typically, a Kenyan pays about 50 shillings a day on kerosene. Here, they pay 40 shillings a day. They get better light. Children can now do their homework and compete with your children here in Nairobi. And of course, it's clean and healthy for our environments. So lastly, ladies and gentlemen, that was a round of applause which was led by the man from Runda. Thank you. So lastly, I really want to touch briefly on the issue of corruption. Corruption does not start with politicians and policemen. It starts at the top of the food chain. And we are at the top of the food chain. It is we who generate wealth, and therefore it is we who generate corruption. Corruption is inherently wrong. It is a misuse of power and position, and it has a 